Hello everyone, Danny the Airbnb Pro, about to check out of my listing here in Panama City. I've been here, Panama City in Panama. I've been here for two weeks and I'm going to do my walk around with you all right now and point out the goods and the bads. Just one note before I get started. A lot of the things I point out may not be relevant to you. If you're offering a really budget conscious listing, then when I'm going to go down to the kitchen and say the kitchen supplies need to be nicer, this wouldn't apply to you because of the fact that you're offering a budget Airbnb accommodation. So keep that in mind while I'm calling out these, these different recommendations. The one I'm in now, this is a higher end Airbnb listing. It's in a high rise building. I'll show you it. It's nice. So the recommendations that I'm giving here are for more of a luxury type of Airbnb listing. We'll start with the good. There's the, the host has, there's three things about this listing going for itself. One is the location. The location is prime. It walking distance to everything. And also it's in a central neighborhood where you can get to any other neighborhood very quickly. Number two is the host. The host greeted me upon arrival and seems to be a nice guy. Three um, is the forgetting number three. <laughs> it's the location, the host, uh, and the space, the actual space, of course. The actual space is nice, it's modern. I'll show it to you briefly right here. It has floor to ceiling, it's a loft, it has floor to ceiling windows, it has a good view. Here's the upstairs, the upstairs bedroom. Okay, so the actual space looks nice. The pictures online were terrible. When I, when I walked in, I remember thinking, whoa, wow, this is nicer than I thought. Usually it's the opposite way around. Usually it's not as nice as you think. All right, so I'm starting up here in the, the loft. And the, when I entered, I, like I said, the host greeted me upon entrance. He was waiting there for me. This is a good check-in. He has to do that because this is a secured building, so he couldn't just put the keys somewhere. So, but it was an easy check-in. The name of the building is on Google, so I could just type in the name of the building. Very easy to do with, with Uber. When I came up here, the AC was on. There's two ACs. It gets very hot here. The AC was on, both upstairs and downstairs. And the dinner table was set. I thought that was a neat feature. Those are the goods. The bads are that this host has done uh, the bare minimums or substandard on numerous aspects of the listing. For being such a nice higher end uh, uh, Airbnb listing, there's many things that just seem off. I'll point out two right away. The first one is this artwork. So what the host has done is just printed this out and then stapled it or, or clipped it here to this art piece, okay? The other thing is this TV. Um, it, it's not plugged in because it doesn't work. Uh, it does work, but it's so grainy that it basically doesn't work. There's other things I will point out. So uh, other things are the kitchen amenities. They're really low quality and the real basics are provided. There's two cups provided. There's two forks provided. Um, Okay, let's go to the bathroom here. The bathroom is fine for the most part. Uh, just a few improvements. Uh, there's no hand towel. That's, that should be provided. There's no soap. Uh, there, was no there was no shampoo. Uh, there was enough towels. He provided three towels. The toilet paper, this has been a big one. The toilet paper is nice. Uh, thick toilet paper. The shower here is fine um, there is it can be so this actually leads straight to the the stairs so people can look in here and they can uh, they can look in here for the toilet area so it's a bit of an, a bit of an odd setup but uh, not, not much you can do about that the water though it is hot for about two minutes when I arrived, it wasn't hot, so I had to have them fix that, but it wasn't a big issue. When it, it goes hot for only two minutes, 
and then it seems to get really cold, uh, and then you lower it down to warm it up. That's how this shower works. And it doesn't get warm, it just goes straight to really hot. Uh, so for a higher end listing, that's kind of not acceptable. Someone wants a, if someone wants a warm shower, it's not really available here. Uh, so I found that was, that was uh, something that could add to the experience. Now, the bedroom here, the bedroom, I'll turn it around. Only one sheet, you can, you can see, I've just kind of folded this here on the bed now, but only, I mentioned last time the bed corners being folded in. And so this, I have, I'm packing up here, so ignore that. The bed sheets were basically folded in. They, they, it looks nice. It was nice, nicely presented when I came here. But I realized shortly that the bed sheet is actually too short. So every night, it would come up on a side and it would show the bed and I'd wake up and sometimes two, three edges would be off. So the bed sheet is too short. Also, the only sheet that was provided was this one, this one thin sheet here. So this is occupancy for two people. So if there's two people in this bed, I don't think this sheet would, this thin sheet would be enough. I already mentioned the TV. I think for this particular setup, uh, having a, if you really want to do it up big, having a TV on the wall there that would swing out would be, would be powerful. One thing I forgot to mention about the bathroom is that there's no trash bag in the bathroom trash can. If you're, having, if you're accepting reservations for more than two or three days, um, there's not really a way to empty that besides buying your own trash bags, unless you're going to take the whole trash bin out to the trash area. So providing trash bags should be a requirement. All right, we're going to head down the stairs here, and while we do that, another pro about this listing is the, the noise. It's silent. I, you really don't hear much at all. That's huge. Uh, if you remember the last one I was at in Costa Rica where there was different noises throughout the day, having a silent Airbnb is huge. You, you can even, this is something you can promote on your listing, letting the guests know that this Airbnb listing is soundproof. You're not going to hear much. You're going to get a quality night's sleep. Now, uh, I mentioned earlier the host is providing the bare minimums or below standard for a lot of the things. So, for example, uh, the TV here. It is so old, it has bunny ears. So the TV only has five or six, seven channels and they're all so grainy. I, I watched it for less than 30 minutes throughout my time here. Uh, so getting a smart TV, it's not expensive. 100, 200 bucks. If you want to get a nice TV, three, four, 500 bucks with Netflix or whatnot in it is a great, great, great idea. So a, a TV like this kind of renders the living room useless for a lot of, a lot of Airbnb guests. The couch is fine. This creates a great opportunity. Since this is such a big space, I think adding, changing that couch into a pullout would be a great idea. You can add another bed. That means you get, you're in more search results. That should be a pullout couch. You can fit three, even four people in this apartment. Now, they have a proper desk. This wasn't really advertised on the listing, but I've come to find out as an Airbnb guest, it is, it is rare to have a proper desk with a proper chair. This is a large desk, so this is a sellable feature that you have a desk. If people are coming for work or to work, they have a proper desk to work at. Moving on into the kitchen, it's a fine kitchen specifically, but it's lacking, like I said, a lot of amenities. Um, everything you see up there, those were all purchased by me. Salt, oil, coffee, seasoning, all of this was purchased by me. Uh, he provided two of everything, the host provided two of everything only. 
And the actual cooking equipment, the actual pots and pans are really, really low quality. They, they seem thin, they start burning the food right away. Um, it wasn't really super enjoyable to cook. There's essentials that are missing as well. He has most of the amenities. They are low quality, but at least he has them. However, he's missing two things that are, I would consider essential. One is a wooden spoon. A wooden spoon is essential because it helps save your cookware. If you're not providing a wooden spoon, people have to use metallic things to cook with. That ruins your dishes faster. So a wooden spoon is an investment. Also scissors. Scissors is a liability thing. If you don't have scissors, what are people going to open their, their packages with? A knife, a sharp knife, which they can injure themselves with. So get a, get a, get a scissors and get a wooden spoon. The post did something interesting here. He provided snacks or just on sale things, glasses, Pringles, coffee. It was nuts in there. Uh, also in the fridge, there are some for sale drinks. I think this is a great idea. Um, and I, as you can see, there was some money over there. I purchased a lot of things. Uh, the, the host says that people from Europe tend to value this and they buy, a they buy a lot of it and they ask him for more. People from North America typically don't buy anything of it. And being from North America, that, that rings true with me. When I was younger, it was like when you went to hotels, don't touch the mini fridge. Don't touch it. It's going to cost too much. It's not about a convenience thing. It just costs too much. I like it. I bought things from it. I think it's a good idea. I will say that when... Uh, I had an Airbnb listing in San Francisco. I did the same thing, except I got so much negative feedback and so few people purchased from me that I stopped it. The negative feedback I got was basically, how dare you charge us? We're paying a lot for this house. Uh, it should be free. You should provide this stuff for free. You should provide waters for free and it's too expensive. So I got so much negative feedback that uh, I thought it was hurting my reviews and I, I stopped doing it. This host, though, uh, I mentioned earlier, there's, there's many things that the host is not providing quality. For example, this, uh, the cutting board, a little bad light here, but the cutting board is, um, it, a lot of the things here seem like an afterthought. Um, there was no wine opener. So the presentation here could be better. It's uh, for... For the quality of listing, having this stuff in a in a box of hand wipes or whatever that is just uh, doesn't seem high end. It rains a lot here in Panama. If it rains a lot here, you should provide your guest with an umbrella. Uh, yes, yeah, some guests will lose that umbrella, but that's it. That's it's just the cost of doing business. If you're in a place that rains, provide the convenience of an umbrella to your guest rather than making the guest walk in the rain or buy an umbrella themselves. One thing that I found odd was this host uh, would come and knock on my door. He would text me to see if I'm here, but if I didn't respond quick enough, he would just come up and knock on the door. And that is not okay. If your guest is renting your space, you cannot knock on the door without notice, regardless of what the laws are in your, in your area, which is it's probably illegal to do that anyways, to just show up unnoticed. If the guest is renting it, you should not just show up. The guest could be doing a whole host of things uh, or just not interested in chatting with the host. So... And one of the reasons the host came was, for example, uh, I needed more dish soap. So he came and provided dish soap. But um, if you want your house, if you want your guests to clean, and a lot of guests clean, don't have them ask you for dish soap, for example. Provide the dish soap. Um, I also, and obviously, you would never come in to the Airbnb without the guest's approval. So that's an absolute no-no. 
There is a bathroom downstairs, but it's out of order, and it's been out of order for two weeks. Um, it's only me here, so upstairs, it's not a big issue to go upstairs, but uh, I would have, have expected that to be resolved within the two weeks that I was here. The last thing is, two more things. Uh, during my time here, when the host, uh, when or if the host uh, figures out who I am and I kind of do this for a living, usually they ask for feedback uh, on their hosting or on their listing. And so this host did that. And as usual, I, I keep a list of pros and cons and other for every Airbnb I'm at. And I do that right away and they start building up through my time there. This host asked me a few days in and I had the list, and so I told him everything on the list, the pros, the cons, the things that I think could have been improved, uh, and uh, nothing, was, nothing was actioned on that list. So I found that odd. Don't ask your host for, uh, don't ask your guest for advice, I guess, if you're not going to uh, provide some of that given advice, not, maybe not all of it, but some of it. Uh, so I don't wanna feel like I'm wasting my time providing advice to you, especially after you've asked it, and then nothing is, nothing is uh, completed from that list. The host upon checkout is going to come to check me out. Uh, I told him 1.30. Um, I'm mixed, I'm, I have mixed feelings about this. Generally, I say don't do this. Unless something negative has happened in the reservation, because uh, it, let's say I want to leave earlier or, or a bit later. Um, I don't want the host hanging out here 15 minutes while I'm in a rush. I know I'm late, I'm already in a rush, I'm trying to get my things out. Um, or if I wanna leave early, do I text the host and say, hey, I'm actually gonna leave early, can I leave the keys in here? Oh, no, you have to wait 20 minutes, I'm on my way though. Um, so I say generally don't do this unless you have had, the guest has had a negative experience. And if the guest has had a ne negative experience, it's in your best interest to come and check them out because it's harder to negatively review a human than it is an experience or a space. So if you come and personally check out the guest, they see probably, hopefully, that you're a nice person, you're trying to do right, uh, and it's gonna be harder for them to negatively review you, the human being, than great two-story house with city views, Airbnb listing. So keep that in mind. That wraps up my my review of Airbnb uh, of my uh, Panama City Panama Airbnb listing. I just released a course on Udemy. It's eleven dollars right now. It is uh, twenty lections, about uh, lessons, tw two hours. I'm gonna add to that over the set next six months. My outline has about twenty five more courses to add. You get lifetime access if you buy it now. And right now it's on sale for $11. And that's true, I think, for the next three days. I don't have, uh, I don't have as far as I know, control over pricing on Udemy. It just, uh, just in ranges. And they have lowered it down for uh, the whole site for the next two or three days, $11. So you buy it now, you get, li you get lifetime access. Um, and if you do, let me know specifically when I do new things like this. Uh, it's always a bit nerve-wracking and nervous to see what the feedback is. Um, I've been lucky enough so far to people like mostly what I'm doing, but this is a new thing. And so if you do sign up for it in the next few days, reach out to me or send me a message. Uh, I want to stay in touch to see exactly what you're thinking real time as you go through the course. And if you're watching this live, like a few of you are, uh, I'm going to post this on my YouTube channel uh, probably in this week because it takes a while to upload. Uh, and as always, let me know how I did, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, what, you, what things you want me to touch on next time. Uh, I do specifically about the listing here, but if there's something you want me to touch on specifically, tell me and I'll do it. Tell me in the comments. Okay, I'm going to catch my flight now. I'm going to uh, Medellin, Colombia, by the way.